Over the past few weeks, I've not been feeling great. Depressive symptoms, insecurities, heightened stress, and all that. But in the fashion of some of the greatest artists and thinkers, self-reflection over my recent episode has led to inspiration. And to make clear, it's not the troubled mental state that has directly led to creativity, it was the introspection of it. I'm not a fan of the idea that good artists are messed up in the head and therefore good art comes from pain. It rather romanticizes serious afflictions. While I would have preferred to lay in bed than do basically anything that would require me to rise, I still made an effort to get my videos out to go to my day job and other daily tasks that needed doing. Especially recording my videos, I noticed an altered state in myself that colored my expressions and how I responded to little issues like line flubs. Admittedly, it's not noticeable if you're not looking for it, but I can see and hear the lack of energy reflected in my performance in places like my video on Rent the Movie. Everything is muted and the highs are dulled, feeling like I'm going through the motions surrounded by a storm cloud. Then this made me think of Maya and how differently she not only looked, but acted. Before season 3 of Next Class, there was always some bounce to her, a bubble of energy about her even when she was sad or downtrodden. But starting with season 3, the word that comes to mind to describe her is hopelessness. An air of everything is kind of futile or just waiting for the next terrible event. Even in season 4, there was just something lacking in comparison to before the bus crash. She was always toned down and even her emotions looked as flat as her hair monotone to the point of her joyous moments coming off as sedated. I've seen in fan discussions this change continuing into season 4 after my suicide attempt being attributed to the actress being bored of the role, that Olivia Scriven was just over Degrassi and phoning in her final season. And maybe internally she was. Again, you can't always tell when someone is distressed as evidenced by my own videos. Even in my valleys of depression, you can't always conclude that I'm going through something unless I directly say so in video or elsewhere. But even if the actress was overplaying Maya and the change in performance was reflective of that, it fits the character. Maya's depression and general listlessness didn't go away after her suicide attempt. Hell, season 4 was just her trying to find the things she once cared about again. Music, her friends, the promise of SoCal art, being at a point where she doesn't want to die anymore hasn't fully reverted her to her pre-depression state. She's teetering not on the edge, but near enough where many activities feel futile, like songwriting. There's still a persistent sense of hopelessness that she needs to work through. Maya knows that she can't always trust her perceptions and choices, so her default is to question everything she does and in turn is still experiencing the same pressure she felt in Season 3. This time she has people to help like Sig and Grace, and she's receptive of their aid, but it will take time for her to not always be hesitant or to fear that everything is about to crumble. This change in tone for Maya is so complete that I have to applaud Olivia Scriven. She's been playing Maya practically the same way for years and then was able to fully shift her expression of the character. And the best part is that everything feels natural. Her altered state is much more noticeable to us because that's the benefit of omniscience, but her friends and schoolmates went on without much concern because again, we don't always take note of changes in those around us until it becomes a trend and we reflect on it. Say for select scenes like in the fight with her mom and the morbid pictures, she wasn't doing anything explosive or that you can immediately recognize as out of the ordinary. Many of her mannerisms and quirks of speech persisted, but at a sedated level. You can see this best if you study her reactions and facial expressions in season 4. She still looks like Maya in face and in personal flair, but partially off if you pay attention. It doesn't feel like Maya became an entirely different person after the crash, just that there's a status debuffer on her. Mood disorders like depression recolor perception and reality, and even though it feels like it and sometimes appears to be so, it doesn't replace who you are when you're not feeling the symptoms. Degrassi understood this and Olivia Scriven was able to interpret how Maya is with depression, which I would bet is harder to do than just play a character who didn't have a seen history before their illness manifested. It's one thing to portray depressed, but another to portray a pre-established person experiencing it. And for this, I think Olivia Scriven deserves credit, no matter what you think of Maya. Unfortunately, it needs to be said that the two are not the same people and your feelings on the character should not carry over to the player. They are but vehicles for storytelling. Though actors often draw from personal experiences to channel emotions, who they play aren't entirely reflections of themselves. So yeah, props to Olivia Scriven. 
I bring this up because, as I've said, I've only seen this talked about in a way to backhandedly criticize the show. The sentiment I tend to see is, oh, even the actress is over the show, she's just phoning in her lines. But I don't think that's the case. I think that's rather dismissive, and it also kind of hand waves the great performance Olivia Scriven gave to the character. Also, the effects of depression don't go away after you fail a suicide attempt, so it'd be unrealistic for Maya to just go back to how she was before. Oh, it is cold in here. I wanted to wear this dress because, well, I wanted to just have a reason to kind of air it out of the closet for once, but it was a bad idea doing it in 10 degree weather. But if you managed to sit through this video and want to keep up with more videos that I make or am involved with, don't trust YouTube, they don't care about you seeing the stuff that you actually like. Instead, follow this Discord invite link where you can use my content stream to keep track of the things that I make, and you can also talk to me in my Not a Vampire Crypt channel when I'm awake, online, and have internet because that's a problem that I have. And then if you're of the Twitter persuasion, you can find me at Not Vampire. Thank you very much for consuming this video, and until next time.